Great, hello everybody and welcome back to the next iteration, uh, next update for the prototype of this text-based RPG um, post-apocalyptic survival game. So, what am I doing with this right now? Well, uh, I have added this giant contraption here, connecting to this, to the controller. So, I am at the point where I have to start programming in inventory and interface items and uh, multiple windows between which I have to switch. So there's the window where you read the story and type in your commands. And uh, in inside of the uh, story, you should be able to interact with items, uh, interact with boxes, containers, cabinets, uh, uh, ammo crates, uh, weapon cases, you know, all of those things you should be able to interact with using text commands. But uh, I didn't want to go text all the way where you have to type in, you know, open inventory, which you could do. Um, it's just I, I wanted to, it to be more interactive than this. Hence why, uh, in order to start implementing inventory, I needed to be able to navigate to the inventory, which is uh, what this contraption here is uh, for. You know, prototype, prototypes be a prototype. Uh, I have two two rotary switches right here. Let me actually focus on that. Two rotary switches. So this guy's a six pole. It's got six positions here. This is supposed to be like the main big old fat knob that you switch between the um, uh, the various modes in the, in the game. Uh, for example, here, I'm going to actually run the application again, just like that. And perfect. Okay, so this is supposed to be your main switch. So you're, let's say, like you're in story mode. You switch to inventory, to stats, where you can find, you know, how much, how many shots you've shot, what your skill sets are, your perks, uh, maybe information about, you know, select between the information uh, of the current quest, uh, current objectives, uh, your affiliation with different, uh, different uh, parties in the game world, radio maybe something else in the main menu. So there's a total of six positions. One of them has yet to be filled up. And uh, this is a six pole and this is a 12 pole. This guy is actually a continuous action switch. So this guy, uh, this guy can spin uh, indefinitely. And there's a total of 12 poles here. But what I'm doing is I'm trying to make it into more like a rotary encoder where I'm uh, grouping all of these pins into groups of three. So one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. So you can see there's actually wires jumping in from one pin to another. And there's the three, three wires for the three groups. And what's going to happen is that I'm going to be detecting uh, which way you're actually spinning it. So if it goes from two to three, you're going forward. If it goes from two to one, you're going backwards. So, so from one to three, three to two, two to one, one to three, three to two, that goes backwards. And, you know, in the opposite direction, that goes forward. This will allow me to actually get you to select items in the inventory. And it has a very, very nice clicky feel to it. So I think that is going to play out quite nicely. And of course, this big fat one is for the menu changes. Uh, and I was surprised at um, just how easy it is to set this guy up with a Raspberry Pi Zero using CircuitPython. So um, this IO expander, um, it's an MCP23017. This IO expander allows me to add 16 additional uh, inputs and outputs uh, to the Raspberry Pi, which in my case, since this is a very IO heavy project, even with you know all of these QWERTY keyboard buttons being multiplexed, um, I'm going to be adding a lot of different buttons and switches and all, all sorts of stuff that I really need to be able to uh, to handle. I need to have a lot of uh, inputs and outputs to handle all of that good stuff. So this guy, what's really interesting is that you see there's uh, A0, A1, and 2. These are address pins, which means that I can actually put a total of eight of these uh, together onto one same uh, address on the I2C line and uh, that will give me a total of 127 additional inputs very cool got lots of room to work with so really happy i went with this guy uh, and uh, mainly now that i've actually gotten the program to recognize my switches i can now start implementing my inventory implementing my menus and uh, start to think about uh, interacting with the in-game um, containers, you know, ammo crates, weapon crates, boxes, all the good stuff. So yeah, exciting stuff. This is actually a, 
this is actually making make me very excited to start working on the online counterpart too where i can build the stories using a web-based interface and um, these stories will become available on this device when you download them via like a menu or something yeah uh looking forward to getting this into some sort of a playable state and uh you guys can keep an eye out